Hello and welcome to the John Arc Show. Today's show is called Seven Things to Do If the Economy Completely Collapses. If the economy completely collapses, we believe there are seven things you should do to protect yourself, your family, and to prosper during, uh, during this event. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe, follow, like, and uh, comment on the show. And also tell you that uh, uh, the show is sponsored by HollywoodIsCalling.com. It's a company which allows you to purchase live calls with your favorite celebrities at prices ranging from uh, $19.95 to $29.95 for a brief call. Uh, so check it out. It's a great uh, thing to purchase for yourself or for the people you care about as a gift. HollywoodIsCalling.com. Now let's get started. This is going to be interesting. So I want to preface what I'm about to say by uh, telling you that I believe the government will eventually solve this pandemic issue and the economy will roar back bigger than ever. But if that doesn't happen and things slip into something very serious, protracted, and long-term, then I think there are some things people should consider doing. Number one, real estate. If the real estate market collapses the way it did in 2008, uh, when many homes lost 80% of their value, some even lost more, uh, then that is going to be something that I think people who have the cash to capitalize upon should consider doing. What's key is that you purchase cash flow positive real estate property. Don't just buy another vacation home or something silly. Buy cash flow generating assets. Wall Street investments and financial instruments, they can lose a lot of their value in a very short time, a shockingly short time. So I think that um, investing in something made of brick and mortar, something tangible that you can touch, something that will generate positive cash flow, something that's controlled by you and not, uh, and not people or regulators on Wall Street, I think that's a huge advantage. What's important is you buy it at the right price and with the right terms. Uh, no matter what happens, people are going to need a place to live. That is a given. The good news is that eventually the market will return just the way it did after the crash of 2008. And when that happened, people who bought at the lows of the market, they made a fortune when the real estate uh, sector came back. We believe that many millionaires, many new millionaires will be created when this real estate market and stock market rebounds. If the downturn is protracted in long term, then I think you should consider hiring several real estate agents in several different towns in your area and have them start aggressively looking for foreclosure properties, uh, rental properties that are generating cash flow. A lot of people are going to have to sell their rental property once the values drop so dramatically that um, they'll be underwater and they may not be able to service the debt on those properties. But not to worry, that just means there will be more opportunities for you. Most landlords operate under the assumption that they're going to have approximately a 10% vacancy rate on their properties. That means if you have 100 units, 10 of them may be empty at any given time for a variety of reasons. However, if the economy completely collapses and there are a lot of people losing their jobs, then I think that you should structure any real estate acquisition that you make based on a 30% vacancy. That's to give you more of a cushion. Make sure you can service whatever debt you need to service. If you buy a building at a price that is low enough, when the interest rates are low enough and the terms are strong enough, uh, uh, then you, you should be okay. You just always want to be conservative with your projections to make sure that you can survive a, uh, a downturn that, that may take a while to rebound. You also want to make sure to, uh, to regularly attend real estate foreclosure auctions that occur. Uh, back in 08, they were taking place on a monthly basis in a lot of the large hotel conference rooms. Um, uh, foreclosure auction companies were coming into town and they were auctioning off properties for, as I say, 70, 80, 90 percent of their former market value. That's a huge discount and people were scooping them up. Within a few years of those, uh, of those purchases, the market had rebounded and people who did buy for 10 or 20 cents on the dollar were making millions of dollars when their property rebounded in value and shot back up to new highs. Number two, the next thing you should consider doing is re renegotiating all your debt, everything, credit card debt, medical bills, mortgage interest terms, 
personal and commercial loans. Aggressively try and renegotiate all your debt so that you can hang on to as much of your cash as possible. Number three, the next thing I want you to consider doing if you're a small or medium sized business owner is to uh, save your business if it's in peril with barter services. Now, if your sales are dropping, if customers aren't paying their bills, um, one option is to add a new feature to your website which encourages people under the right circumstances to, uh, to engage in barter for your products and services with their own products or services or assets. It is a great way to generate, um, to generate a resource flow when people don't have the money to do cash transactions. Great way to save your business. And trust me, it's a little, it's a little less perfect it's you know it's not they're not cash transactions but it is a lot better than um, than filing your business than filing bankruptcy for your business <clears throat> number four whether you're an individual or a company owner you want to hire a great law firm that specializes in debt collection um, a lot of conventional debt collection companies uh, uh, simply aren't equipped to go after people who are really skilled at avoiding the payment of their debts. So you want to hire a law firm that specializes in debt collection for a number of reasons. Why? They have additional tools at their, at their disposal to force people to, uh, uh, to make payments. And also, simply receiving a letter from a law, from a law firm uh, with you know, a, a, a something with law firm letterhead at the top will make a difference and it'll encourage people to uh, to pay their debts sometimes when they won't answer a, a letter from a conventional debt collector. Number five, renegotiate the property taxes on uh, on your real estate. When, uh, when real estate collapsed in 2008, a lot of people across the country went down to their town halls and uh, demanded that their their, uh, their home property taxes be dramatically reduced because their houses had fallen in value by huge percentages. Now, they would file appeals, and after a while, there were so many appeals being filed that the cities had no choice but to dramatically reduce people's tax payments. Why? Because they knew that if all these cases went to court, these property tax appeals went to court, they would lose, and they would incur tremendous additional costs. So make a point of being very assertive in trying to reduce your property taxes. Number six, try and avoid a divorce if at all possible. A lot of couples, when they're under tremendous financial stress, think, well, if we file for divorce, I might be able to uh, be better off on my own. Or if I find somebody else who's in better financial shape than my current spouse, uh, you know, maybe that'll help. I want you to think about that for a second, because if you do go the divorce route, Divorce lawyers can take anywhere from 10% to a third of, of the assets if these battles go on for years, and sometimes they do. It's better that you and your spouse hang on to your assets than, uh, than, forward, for, than, than allowing a, a divorce attorney to take them. Number seven, and this is one nobody wants to face, but it will be an eventuality. If the economy collapses for the long term, Prepare for a hellish increase in, in crime. Increases in both white collar crime and street crime are, it's going to skyrocket. On the white collar side, you should be, uh, you should expect to be the victim of endless telemarketing scams, endless uh, sophisticated banking scams, email phishing scams, things that have never been seen before but are so diabolically clever that uh, a small percentage of the population will fall for them. Be really careful. Uh, another thing that, uh, that will happen is violent street crime will skyrocket. Regardless of your views on gun ownership, um, I believe that anyone who can't or won't protect their homes with a firearm is going to be the victim of something called reoccurring burglary. That's where people in your neighborhood Sit, sit on the porch across the street and they just watch and survey the entire neighborhood and the minute they leave they'll uh, the minute the homeowner across the street leaves they run across the street they kick in your back door 
and within a minute or two, they're gone with many of your assets. And sometimes for good measure, they'll vandalize your house on the way out. Don't expect, you know, don't expect the police to arrive in a, as quickly as they do on television. That almost, that, that rarely happens. They may show up. I've heard of instances where the police show up three, four hours late because they're so overrun with, with 911 calls. Get an alarm, get a dog, and protect yourself and your family. You know, being an anti-gun advocate does you no good if someone in your family is killed by a home invader or if, um, you know, every time you leave the house, you get burglarized and, uh, and they hit you two or three times a month. Eventually, that'll break you financially. Be pragmatic. Protect yourself. Now, having said all this, I still believe the economy will rebound dramatically and be more successful than ever. But if it doesn't, I just want you to be prepared. Thank you, and we'll talk to you soon.